Hey, what's up guys? So today, let's make a branching narrative with choices in Unity. So as you can see here, I have a quest that's loaded up. Click next, it continues the dialogue. And now I've got choices. And if I click on one, then as you can see, it gives me one answer. And if I redo the same quest again, I click next. And as take another one, as you can see, the choices is different. So let's get started. So first, uh, let's view the actual scene setup. So here we have a basic canvas that holds the actual placeholder. Uh, so this placeholder is for the actual character, uh, the profile, all right. And then we've got the background as well as the description and also a title text, which is right here. And for the choices, we've got a basic uh, empty game object with a scroll view attached to it. And then on the content, we've got a content size reader with a horizontal layout group. And then we have a prefab for the choice button. Uh, here it is. Uh, the actual choice button has a button game object, content size feeder, horizontal layout group, so that when this text changes, it also dynamically adjusts the sizes of it. And then here we also have the choice button that we'll see in the view. And this is it for the actual scene setup. As for the managers, we have the dialog manager. Uh, this one is another script that we'll see in a bit. It has uh, variables for the title, description, uh, the delays, as well as for all the choice uh, prefab and where to spawn it and then we've got a sample choice this represents um, your script that will handle the choices so for us here we've got just the choice that we want to load as well as the quest manager which basically is just dialogue game check and then we've got the link between what choice to what um, next dialogue to shoot so for instance this is the dialogue when you choose the third option uh, this is for the first option and so on and here are the choices so this is the title this is the actual description and then here is the choices that you have you can add more choices if you want and each one has a unique id that you can use as well as the text that appears on the buttons so let's go into the coding side of things so here is the choices script object so before we continue guys, do check out my previous episode on how to make the dialogue system because we are heavily relying on this one. So here as you can see, we are deriving from the NPC dialogue script object. And here we've got the new choices list, which basically allows us to define the text that is shown to the user, so on the buttons, as well as an ID that we can use for the backend for our code. So as you might, have, you might remember, we've used A1, B1, B2, and A2, but this can be anything that you want. And then we've got also a class called choice to dialogue, which basically allows us to link the ID to a dialogue. Then we've got the quest choice manager. And this one derives from the dialogue manager of the dialogue video that we've seen and this one has the flag called me choice which is true whenever we have clicked on any choices then we've got a reference to the prefab for the choice as well as the transform as to where we are going to instantiate that button and we just keep track of all the buttons that we spawned so we can clear them later and then we've also got a delegate that allows us to basically link it to other scripts so they can listen to whenever a choice has been made and do the appropriate actions. And then we've got a method called the show dialog, which takes a choices script to the object and then just displays it. Here is the coroutine. So it takes a dialog, a choices script to the object, sorry, and then runs the show dialog coroutine that we had in last episode. So this is exactly how we made it last time. The only difference is that now we are actually 
modifying the loop itself so instead of high instead of showing the next button whenever the dialog has finished displaying we are not showing the next button however we are instantiating all the choices so the users can choose this as you can see we are initializing the choice button as well and then we are just waiting for a choice to be made once this has been done we clear all the choices and then we just disable the dialog uh, canvas altogether and then we call the actual uh, delegate to tell the other scripts that yeah the choice has been made now let's look at the dialog manager so this is the dialog manager that we had in the last episode however we did amend some changes to it namely as you can see i've added the protected and virtual uh, everywhere so this way i can modify it in the other scripts and furthermore we also added a new method named the show dialog a wave just a dialog scriptable object as well as a flag whether or not to modify the buttons afterwards all right so basically what i did is i just moved the logic to this new coroutine and then just split it so as I can use this for the choices as well so as you can see here if this is set to false it does not modify the actual canvas nor the buttons but if this is to true then yes and then just displays every title and uh, description that we had just like before and then this new enumerator allows us to pass in the NPC manager that we had modify the quests to show and then just move next on the NPC manager so that's about it for this one so now moving on to the next one which is the choice button uh, this is the button that appears whenever we are prompting the user to choose something and here we have a method that's called on click this is called by the button handler on the actual UI uh, basically what it does is we just call the on choice made a method that is present in the quest choice manager and then pass in the index as well as what code we had all right so the choice id and then moving on to the sample choice handler this would be your script that handles the choice in our case here uh, whenever we click on the actual um, button we subscribe to a choice display the actual message with the choices of course and then whenever uh, the script returns the choice has been made so whenever our delegate is called or invoked rather uh, this method is being called and this method what it does is just unsubscribes to the delegate tries to find if we have any um, dialogue that we linked so remember that we had a class earlier that allowed us to link a uh, a choice ID to some dialogue yeah so this is whatever it does it just takes this ID and tries to find it in this list and then if we found one we just display this dialogue instead so we have now reached the end of today's video and if you have followed everything through then you should be having a fully functional and working quest sorry dialogue system with choices this time around again if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like subscribe if you have not already and also don't forget to watch the previous episode if you haven't done so and if you've got any queries questions or anything you want to add do feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well check the description box because this project will be available on the unity asset store so on this note i'll see you guys in the next one Bye.